Okay, welcome back, everyone. So, um, just to talk about John's comment, said you know when we don't know the song words, and when the music dominates that song, and because of course the words, um, you don't understand the words, and then he says, "I don't feel involved and uh, detached." Yeah, it's a it's a normal thing that could happen when we when we, you know unfamiliar songs are, and also the language. Uh, they say it's a different language, and then you don't know the meaning of it. So. Um, the Bible talks us, you know, uh, talks to us about singing praise with understanding. You know? So yes, uh, it's bound to happen. Um, but if uh, you know, if we understand that uh, praise and worship is going to be uh, from our spirit, you know, I'm not ruling out the fact that it can be a challenge. You know, when we don't know the meaning of what we are singing, but uh, at times, you know, it happens that we are in a situation, we are in an environment where. You know, there's praise and worship, and it's an unfamiliar language, or maybe the words are not familiar. It's a new song, right? So those are times when we engage in our spirit, right? Maybe sing out in tongues or worship the Lord in tongues, right? So we don't, um, because it's unfamiliar, we don't withhold our praise to God, right? We don't hold back. We maybe we don't know the tune, but then we look at the words, and if the words are put on the screen or you know you have a sheet, uh, the thing is to take it up. And make it, uh, you know, an act of worship to God. You know, that is what you know we can do. And there have been times, you know, we've been in places where uh, it's completely unfamiliar, right? The language itself is different, uh, and then you don't understand, or maybe you just bits and pieces you do. So those are times when we can actually engage, um, or you know, worship the Lord in our spirit. You know, I'm not saying other times we don't, but truly in our spirit, in the sense we we sing out in tongues, we sing out and you know, uh, praise God in tongues and and just continue to do that, and it's 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 wonderful when we can do that, and uh, you know that it can be a powerful time of uh, worship as well, right? So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. And yeah, Shani, you had a question, so please go ahead. I just wanted to find out what is the word for the fill in the blank for Zamar, also for some of the other ones too, the praise words. I know you have the fill in the blank. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's um, it. It talks about praise, obviously. Um, for example, zaman to celebrate in in music or celebrate in um, uh, to make music sing. So let me just go through to make music, sing praises, um, to touch the strings or part of music uh, instrument, to celebrate in uh, in a song or celebrate in music. And um, if you look at any other previous ones. Okay. As an act of praise, again, to praise, to salute, to thank, to kneel down, to bow down, to bless God as an act of praise. Um, it, it can even be an act of surrender. So it's not just one thing, but, um, you know, um, glory, uh, we're looking at Tehillah. Uh, it talks about a, a spontaneous song. It, it talks about a song um, that is not, uh, not written previously, a, so a spontaneous song. So. Yeah, so that's just for us to deepen our understanding. Um, Shabak means to address in a loud tone, to command, to shout, and so on, right? Yeah. Um, any other question? Um, what about the first word? Yeah. Can you um, do the... Um, in, hello? Uh, I think I put the right one for her law. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which word did you say? Sorry, Shan. Hala. Hala, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm just going there. Now. So, hala. Okay, to shine, to boast, to be clamorously, you know, in fact, it says to clamorously be foolish, to be loud, to celebrate. Okay. Yeah. And the first one, Yada, that's only, I don't, yeah. I don't have one. Yeah. So Yada, um, okay. Yeah. With extended hands. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So thank lift, you. Lifted hands or extended hands. Yeah. No problem. Okay. So, um, so we looked at all these words which give different expressions and different contexts for praise. So, uh, so the thing is for us to, you know, step out and do that, right? I'm sure all of us, um, you know, I've seen that uh, very expressive in your praise and worship to God. But there are, you know, sometimes when, based on our 
uh, backgrounds, you know, a church background or even culture, right? Or maybe even our temperament, right? So we sometimes hold back. We say, okay, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is this is what I'm not comfortable with, right? We say, okay, we have our own restrictions. We put limitations on our expressions of praise to God, right? So we can actually expand. We can say, okay, this is something that I'm not used to, but then it's there in the Word of God. It's there in the Bible. So, and this is the revelation of it. This is the context of it. So when you get the revelation in your heart, right? The revelation of why we do that in our heart, the reason, the biblical reason, when it, when it becomes a revelation in our heart, then it becomes even more meaningful to express God. Okay, so it starts with the revelation, right? Starts with the understanding of this is who he is. So with the understanding and with the revelation in our heart, then it becomes automatic. Praise becomes automatic, right? Okay. So let's look at chapter 3 now uh, about the foundations of praise. Okay. Just to reiterate, praise means to, to compliment, to applaud, to express our approval, right? to say uh, something nice, right? um, to magnify, to glorify, etc. If you want to use biblical terms, right? So it is the verbal confession again. You know, it is not something that is hidden. It's not something that is unspoken, but it's the verbal confession. It could even be an act of praise, but it's a verbal confession of adoration, thanksgiving uh, for what God has done and also what he will do. Right? It is to for what who he is, what he has done, and what he will do. So it's thanksgiving, it is adoration, it's compliment, it's magnifying, it's glorifying him, right? So we got we praise God. Sometimes we praise God directly. Then we tell God, Lord, you are like this, I praise you. You are like this, I praise you. You are good, I praise you. You are all powerful, I praise you. Right? We praise him directly. And sometimes we do it indirectly, right? We tell our neighbor, hey, do you know who my God is? You know, we make a boast in the Lord, you know, do you know who my God is? And when we share our testimony, this is what he did for me, and therefore I praise him. Right? This is what, uh, this is who he is. Uh, and I've come to understand that, I've come to experience that, and therefore I praise him. So it's an indirect praise. And some of our songs that we sing are direct praise to God, and some of the songs that we sing are indirect praise to God. Right? Can you think of a song that's a direct praise to God? Any song that you... I don't know, something that you've done, sang yesterday or something that is a direct praise to God. Which one? What, what song is this? Sorry, I'm not able to get the tune. He is? Is that a song? Oh, I see. Um, City of Light. Okay. So is, the song's name is Good and Gracious, is it? Okay. So it's a direct. Uh, so it says, God, you are good. You are gracious. Okay. Okay. So that's a direct reference to God. We praise him directly. We address him directly. Right. Any song that you can think of that that's an indirect, you know, praise to God, an indirect reference of praise to God. Right. Who is like the Lord? Right. Strong, mighty. And um, is there any uh, a direct reference in the song? No, it just says stand up and praise him, give him the glory. Right. So it's a it's a classic indirect praise to God. You know, there are songs which have both a mix of both direct and indirect. Right. For example, this song, um, um, I think it's... Uh, how great is our God? Does it have a both direct and indirect reference? How great is our how great, how great is our God? Okay. And then um, name above all names, you are worthy of all praise. So it's a it's a direct reference to God. So we sometimes it's you know it's it's a mix of both. But um, the fact is that when it comes to praise, we do that. There is this whole direction which is direct, which is also indirect. Come now is the time to worship. Again, an indirect, you know, a reference of praise to God. Um, okay, so let's um, maybe you can write down 
a few things where you can, you know, maybe just one, one or two things, a direct reference to God. What you would like to praise God for, you know, when it comes to, you know, maybe you just, you know, you, you want to praise Him. How would you do it directly? You know, and how would you do it indirectly? Maybe you just write down just a couple of things. If it's direct praise, what do you want to praise Him for? If it's something, if you're telling a person, you know, uh, indirectly, you know, what are the, those two things that you want to tell him? You know, so two direct praises to God and two indirect praise to God. You understood, right? Any doubts? You okay, write down, right? Yeah, go ahead. You can write down on a in your notebook or even in the notes. You can just write down two things that you want to praise him. Right, so do that directly and do that indirectly. Right? Use your imagination, and will it come from your heart? Okay. Yeah, Daniel, I sing praises to your name, Shani, the blessing. Yes. Okay, so you don't look at the other person. You, you look at what you're writing. Okay, your praise to God. Okay, maybe you can. You can. The first exercise can be direct thing. Can be you know, Lord, I pr I praise you, and then you fill it. For you are like this, or you did this. I praise you, and I praise you, Lord. The second one can be you know, He. Is worthy of praise because okay? something like that. So let it be four different things: two direct, two indirect. Um, online students, um, you can even put it on the chat so we can see a direct reference of praise to God and an indirect reference of praise to God. You know, from your heart, from your life. Okay. Are we done? If yeah, I'd like you to write it, please, everyone. I want you to write it, right? So when you write it, you're engaging, you're thinking, and you're putting it on paper, and when you see it, it becomes even more meaningful, right? Don't just think about it, but write it. Okay? Done? Okay. Finish? Okay. Just imagine if he's here, what would you tell him? What would you text him? Right? He's here. What would you tell him? Or you know, your friend is here and you're telling him, directing him uh, about God, directing him to God. Right? Yeah, I see all this on the online. And um, yeah, I see that um, Chandra, um, you know, it, it's good to also include the reason, you know, um, if you can. Amazing why, awesome why. Uh, I magnify you why. Um, Yeah. Sorry. Okay. 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 Good. Right. So this is something that helps us to, you know, even realize maybe it was in our heart, but we didn't, or we did, we thought about it, but we didn't really express it. Okay. We didn't really say it out. When we write it down. Becomes it comes out what is in our mind comes out we see it on paper right okay, so take a minute to just speak it out okay just between you and God um, softly quietly just tell the Lord you know just read that out and just tell the Lord Lord you know you are for example you know I see something on the online thing you are awesome God and you can give a reason why He is awesome Lord you are amazing right give the reason why He is amazing and um, yeah. Some of you have been very uh, specific, and you know, I thank you, Lord, for my health. 
and children. Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead. Let's just take some time to just verbally, you know, praise is verbal, right? Praise is not something that is non-verbal or something that is in our heart. It's not contemplative, it's verbal. So let's open our mouths, okay? Let's uh, let's just thank the Lord. Yeah, just go ahead. Wherever you're sitting, wherever you're seated, um, you know, online students also, um, just go ahead and just speak it out loud enough for you to hear. Okay. Yeah. Father, we thank you, God. Just go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise you. You are mindful of me, God. I thank you, God, that you are, you care. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Because through the ages, God, every, every crossroad, every milestone, you've always been there. I thank you. I thank you for the past. I thank you for the present. I thank you for the future, God. I thank you that you hold everything in the palm of your hands, God. Thank you. We praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meaning and purpose. And thank you, Lord. Your presence changes everything, God. Thank you for the hope. Thank you, Lord. As faith rises up, God, thank you for the freedom that we have in your spirit. Thank you for the liberation, God. Thank you for opening the prison doors, God. Thank you for cleansing. Thank you that strongholds come down in your name, Jesus. Thank you for the authority that you've given us, God. Thank you for the, yeah, the commissioning, the call. Thank you, God. Thank you that it is so sure. And you can even use scripture, you know, like the promises of God. Thank you, Lord, for your thoughts towards me, uh, Good thoughts, good plans, God. Thank you that, that it's not for calamity. We praise you. Lift your name, God. Praise you, Father, because you said that you have come to give life and life in its fullness. Oh, we praise you, God. Praise you, Master. Bless you, Lord. Bless the Lord of oh my soul and all that is within me. And bless his holy name. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Oh, you are holy. Your name is holy. Bless your holy name, God. Yes, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we bless your name, God. Bless your name. Praise you, Father God. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, Rumo, Sikin, Teke, Rime, Shikin, Tere, Rumo, Soko, Rebe, Kingere, Rime, Sipe, Pere, Rumo, Sentere, Rime, Shikara, Horo, Rumo, Sinkere, Rime, Shentere, Rime, Sipa, Papa, Robo, Second, Tere, Rime, Shipa, Papa, Here, Rime, Singere, Rumo, Sentere, Rime, Shipa, Rabo, Sentere, Rime, Sikere, Ribe, Kentere, Rumo, Second. Oh, just lift your voice and praise Him. Lift your voice in adoration. Lift your voice in thanksgiving. Let's praise Him with the understanding. Let's praise Him from the revelation. Just take your time. You know, take your time. Just think about God. Think about what He's done. and Think about His promises. And let's do this meaningfully. Let's do it with our whole heart. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, if not for you, God, if not for your grace, God, where would we be? Oh, I praise you. Bless your name for your grace. Bless your name, God. Praise you for lifting us up, God. Praise you for lifting me up, Father God. I thank you for your faithfulness, God. In the robo secondary. Heri rumo second tiken tere riba sempere. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Shake and tiki, Romo, Sentere, Ribe, Sipa, Papa, Robo, Seme, Kentere. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Shomo, Tentere, Ribe, Pipa, Papa, Papa, Robo, Seme, Kentere. Yeah, I just want to request one thing. You know, if you, uh, you know, we just read about um, uh, this, this phrase right now. We just read about Barak, which means to bow down, to kneel down. So, yeah, no compulsion, but if you want to go ahead and kneel down, just go ahead. Uh, maybe it's been a long time since we knelt down in the presence of God. And, um, you know, those of you who are watching online, and um, you, 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 if you can, if you can, just go ahead, just kneel down. Let's spend some time in the presence of God, just kneeling down before Him, humbling ourselves before Him, because He's 
he's uh, awesome. He's powerful. He's all worthy. So let's do that. Yeah, those of you who can just go ahead, just kneel down if you're able to, and and um, yeah, just just engage with God. Just lay it all down uh, in that posture of surrender. Things that we are struggling with, just lay it down. Um, things that we have tried to, you know, keep in our own control and not let go to God. Maybe it's a time to let go. Just acknowledging who He is. Yes, Lord, our times are in your hands, God. Yes, our life is in your hands, O oh Father God. We are not kneeling down before man, but we are kneeling down before God. We are kneeling down before Him who is worthy. We are kneeling down because the word of God declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee on earth, above the earth, under the earth. It talks about the whole universe and it says every knee will bow. Uh, some knees will bow out of compulsion because they will come to the realization, hey, Jesus is Lord after all. All that I've been hearing and rejecting is actually true. So some of those knees will kneel down in, in out of compulsion. They have to kneel down, but some will do so willingly. And uh, we have the privilege of having known uh, the name of Jesus, having experienced the power of salvation. Um, and so, you know, even as we kneel down, we are kneeling down before that great and wonderful name we're saying jesus name above all names jesus you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy god yes lord you alone are worthy oh god you alone are worthy oh father god you alone oh god to to you alone our god our knees will bend oh god to you alone we will bow down oh father god you alone we will acknowledge oh father god that you are lord yes master we yield and we surrender Father God, for there is no other name, O oh God, that is given on earth, O oh God, or in heaven or under the earth by which we might be saved, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, we are saved, O oh God, because of who you are, Father God. Lord, in your name there is salvation, God. In your name there is forgiveness, O oh Father God. And Lord, in your name, O oh Father God, yes, when your name is pronounced and declared, God, the demons tremble and flee, O oh God. Yes, Lord, there is deliverance in the name of Jesus and yes there is healing and so we bow down and we declare in, in your name there is healing we acknowledge and so God if there is anything oh God anything that needs healing uh, maybe in our bodies and our minds oh God even as we bow down before that wonderful and awesome name let there be healing in the name of Jesus let there be healing in the name of Jesus any kind of oppression if it is the oppression of the mind oh Oh, let there be deliverance in the name of Jesus. Any kind of weighing down oppressive thoughts or oppressiveness and being weighed down by unnecessary burdens and weights. Oh, let there be freedom right now. Let people be set free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever be the infirmity, whatever be the condition, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak to it right now in Jesus' name. We speak deliverance in Jesus' name. We speak healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, O oh God. We lift up your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You you are worthy. You are worthy. You alone are worthy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are worthy, God. Hallelujah. Be enthroned in our lives, God. Come rule and reign in our hearts and our minds, God. We invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let our thoughts change, O oh God. Lord, let the, our words change, O oh Father God. Let the meditations of our heart, let it change, O oh God. Yes, Lord, let there be transformation, O oh God, because we worship the one who is holy. We worship the one who is pure. We worship the one who is awesome and above all. We worship who's one who is fairest of 10,000. We worship, oh, the rose of Sharon. We worship you, O oh Father God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And Lord, your word declares that we be 
become like the one whom we worship. And so, God, as we surrender, as we yield, and as we worship, Lord, even as, Lord, your word says that as we take a glimpse of your glory, Lord, may we be changed, O God, from who we are into that same image, O God. For so you ordained, Father God, that we be changed into the likeness of that same image of whose glory, O God, we see, of whose glory we behold. Yes, Master. Yes, Lord, may we be changed from the inside out, God. Yes, Lord, may we be transformed, O oh God. Lord, and Father God, I pray that the way we live our life, Lord, let it be a lifestyle of praise. Let it be a lifestyle, O oh God, of Yoda, Yada, God. Let it be a lifestyle of Toda, God. Let it be a lifestyle of Shabak, O oh God. Let it be a lifestyle of Halal, O oh God. Let it be a lifestyle of Tehillah, O oh Father God. Let it be a lifestyle of Barak, O oh God. Let it be a lifestyle of Zamar, O oh Father God. Let it be a lifestyle, Father God. Let it not be just, oh God, something of an academic, oh God, academic learning, Father God, but let it be a lifestyle, oh God, of uh, application, Father God. Yes, Master, may we walk in the reality of it. May we walk in it, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Let's be seated. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So he's worthy, right? He's worthy of praise. And, um, you know, every time we, we praise him and worship him, um, the Lord Jesus says, you know, he, he tells his disciples, we go, we look at that verse, I think in the book of Matthew, he says that, uh, you know, these people worship me, but their hearts are far, far away. It's in Matthew's, Matthew's gospel, chapter 15, right? It says, uh, uh, he's referring to the book of Isaiah, um, and he's saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So let it not be true. Let that not be true in our lives. Right. So whatever it is, you know, it could be a word that we say, it could be a line that we sing, it could be something that we do, but you know, let our hearts be drawn to him. Right. Let it not be for the sake. You know, we might be, we might feel like it, we may not feel like it, we may be tired, we may be burned. But if we are worshiping God, if we are praising God, you know, let our hearts, let our words uh, be one. Right. Uh, whatever it is, you know, and to help us, you know, maybe we can even pray in the spirit and uh, we are be, be edified in the inner man. And then let's just do this, you know, not as something. Let it not be just something that we say with our mouth, something that we you know do with our lips, but then let it be something that we do with our hearts, right? Because that's the those are the worshippers that the Father is seeking, that those who will worship in spirit and in truth, right? And not out of uh, not out of compulsion, not out of a religious duty or anything, right? And we will also see that how you know our praise and worship, how it's a how it's a lifestyle. It goes beyond this time. Of praising God, whether it's personal or corporate, it it moves beyond that. It's much bigger than that. It becomes our lifestyle, right? Oh, so, praise God. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, a couple of things uh, here, uh, where we see, um, you know, where 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 do we see the first reference of um, praise? Uh, and we see this in in the book of Genesis, and it's in. Um, um, Genesis 29 and verse 35, okay, it talks about Judah. Let's uh, read that verse. Genesis 29 and verse uh, 35 says, um, talks about, um, yeah, um, um, yeah, Leah and uh, Jacob's wife. And, and so um, verse 35 says, she conceived again and bore a son and said, now I will, I will praise the Lord, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah, and then she stopped bearing. Like Judah literally means praise. Okay, so we see this first reference of praise in the book of Genesis, right? So, and then in the New Testament, uh, now just for our understanding, the New Testament we see it in Matthew chapter 21, 
Matthew 21 and verse 16. And, and these are the words of the Lord Jesus. And he is referring to Psalm 8 and verse 2. Right? Um, so we're looking at Matthew 21 verse 16. So the context is this. Uh, Jesus goes into the temple. He drives out all those who are buying, selling, and you know who are for them it becomes a business. The whole thing is, uh, you know, all these money changers and everyone. So he drives them out, and he says, "My house shall be called a house of prayer," and uh, and you have, but you have made it a den of thieves, right? Matthew chapter sixteen, uh, sorry twenty one. And then he says, uh, everybody comes blind, lame, they come and they heal them. Uh, and verse 15, it says, when the priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David. So they, they saw, they experienced his hand, his wonderful things, and they were crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. And... Um, so when the scribes saw, they were indignant, they were angry, they were offended. You know, how can somebody sing praise to Jesus? They said, and then, so do you hear what these people are saying? You know, they, they asked Jesus, do you hear what they're saying? They're saying, you know, they're praising, they're lifting up praise and they're saying this. And Jesus says to them, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected? Psalm 8 in verse 2, you know, the psalm says, you have ordained strength or you have perfected praise. One and the same thing, right? He says, out of the mouths of babies, little children, infants, you have perfected praise. Right? So they are praising him. They have seen and they know that he is worthy of praise. There's nothing hindering them from praising Jesus, right? So, um, so he says, you know, the, out of the mouth, you have ordained praise. This is what is happening right now. So we see that these two references, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, right? So the Bible, when we look at um, some of the, uh, the reasons for praising, it gives it different reasons. You know, I like the song says, you know, 10,000 reasons to praise the Lord, right? 10,000 reasons and even more, or 10,000 years or even more in order to praise the Lord. So look at some of these Psalms, right? It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. Uh, praise is a good thing, just something excellent, valuable. The word used there is good. Psalm 92 verse 1, something of value, something that is that has got beauty in it. So it's a, it's a good thing to praise the Lord. Uh, praise is beautiful, Psalm 147 verse 1, and we praise him for his mighty acts. You know, if you ever you think, okay, what can I praise God for? Right? These are the different reasons you can think, you know, think of. It, it is, praise is good. His, his name is beautiful and agreeable. Praise to him is beautiful and agreeable. We praise him for his mighty acts. You know, whatever all, all those acts that you can think of, we praise him. And praise him for his grace. Ephesians 1 talks about that. 1 Thessalonians, we, you know, we praise him uh, for... Uh, just one second. Um... Yeah, so we praise him because he is great and wise. And so, so all these scriptures, all these scripture verses, they give an attribute of God, right? So it's like this, you know, even some of the songs that we sing, it gives an attribute of God, meaning it actually opens a window to see who God is, right? To experience who God is, to get a revelation of who God is. Every time we read the word, right? and every time the Holy Spirit opens our eyes, opens our understanding to see who God is. You know, we see him in a different aspect. You know, we may, maybe we have read the words, over, read the scriptures over and over and over again, but the Holy Spirit, he opens our eyes, opens our understanding to give us a fresh, you know, view of God. Right? You know, how many of us have gone to a mountain, you know, like, uh, I think uh, all of you, uh, Nandi Hills, did you guys go? No. Uh, okay. Some of you who are there in the short-term Bible college, you know, you, as you go, as you climb up, you get a different view of the same place, right? Of the plains. You know, as you maybe take uh, a happen bend and then you stop there and then you see, okay, it looks a little different. And then you, you know, go up higher and then you, you, there's a viewpoint and then you're like, wow. This place looks beautiful. So it's a, it's like climbing a mountain, and different points in the journey, you see a different aspect or different view of the same thing. 
right? And you go on right on top and you see, you see a lot more and you see the big picture, right? So it's like this. When you go, when you journey through the, through the scriptures and when we journey through life and when our eyes are opened to different aspects of God, attributes of God, characteristics of God, characteristics of God like we see that and then our response is praise. Right? So many times we, 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 you know, when it comes to praise and worship, maybe we use those words, you know, I praise you, I bless your name. But it's good to, I mean, it's important to be grounded in the revelation of why we use those words, right? So many times we think, okay, if it comes to praise the Lord, I should just say praise the Lord, praise the Lord, you know, over and over again, praise the Lord. Stotra Andre, Nandri, and you know, those of you know Tamil, and you know, and that's the time, you know, that's what we do. We need to do over and over again, repeated 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. Well, great, but why do we do that? Right? That happens because of the journey, that happens because of the view that we get, that happens because of you know, different points in our journey where we what Bible talks about as revelation. Like things that are revealed to us, opening our eyes, opening our understanding about who God is. There's so much. He's infinite, which means there's so much more to God than what we have already known and experienced. So when we receive that, and that's yet another reason, that's another uh, you know, uh, reason for us to praise God. Right? Okay, so I think somebody has a question. Um, I see two raised hands, so you can, yeah, go ahead. Either type it out or ask your question. Oh, I just had a question about um, direct praise and um, and direct. I know you said it's for us to write down how we would praise God directly and directly. Maybe I should ask you when you um said it. So yeah. I, I know in terms of directly, uh, from my understanding, the way you write down stuff, praise God directly for what He has done. But I was kind of not clear about praising God indirectly. Because I know in the notes it says, by commenting him to others. So you told us to write that down. Can you give an example of that? To me, it was kind of confusing. Yeah, so uh, so it's just uh, indirect speech. You're addressing God, you're acknowledging God, and you're praising him directly. So that's you know a way of directly praising God. So indirectly, it would mean that you're testifying about him to someone else. Right? You're testifying your maybe about what he's done for you, and therefore you're praising him. You're testifying of who he is to you, to another person, and therefore it's an indirect praise to God. You are praising him as you testify to another person. So uh, just a uh, differentiation you know, for us to know that, yeah, you can do it directly, but you can also do it as you testify, as you share with another person about what he has done and who he is to you. Yeah, that I understood about another person, but you told us to write down, you said write yeah. down how you appraise that. Yeah. That's why I didn't quite understand, because if it's to another person, how we, you told us to write it down, that's what I was confused about. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So write down, write down the same thing, you know, so, you know, as if you're writing to someone else. And the first one is as if you're writing to God, Lord, you are. And the second one is as if you're writing to someone else. Do you know that my God is this? This is what my God did, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Okay, so while we have all these reasons, you know, the one main overarching reason is that he's worthy of praise. Right? Revelation, we read about that, you know, is this he's the one who is worthy of praise. Revelation 4 and 5, you know, the, the, the throne room saying he's worthy to receive. He's the only one who's worthy to receive this kind of praise and accolade, and you know, no other human being, no other created being is worthy to receive this kind of honor but God alone. Okay, um, Psalm 22 verse 3, it says, um, let's read that verse. Psalm 22 and verse 3, that he is enthroned. Okay? He is enthroned in the praises of his people. Okay, But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Okay, so we, we looked at that, you know, I think earlier also the fact that um, God is um, God is enthroned. What does the enthroned mean? He is every every monarch or every 
ruler uh, in the past, um, you know, and you see that they have a special place, right? A special seat, which signifies that that person is the ruler. And uh, in the past, it is always the, the throne. And the throne room signified the presence of the one who was enthroned, right? And uh, the kingdom referred to the territory or the domain of the one who ruled and reigned, who was enthroned, right? So, so we see the throne, the seat of the one who, who is the king or the sovereign one. Then we also see the throne room. And all this we see, you know, in the, in the kings and queens and the rulers of the past, right? So here it says, Psalm 22 and verse 3, Lord, you are enthroned in the praises of your people. Right? So we know that God is sovereign. He is all-powerful. He is the ruler. Okay? There's, no, you know, there's no vote you know, that we vote him back to power, nothing like that. Right? He is all-powerful. There's nothing that we can do to bring him to the throne. He is already enthroned. Okay. So what does it mean when it says you are enthroned on the praises of Israel? Any thoughts? What does that mean? You are enthroned. So I, I declare a praise. I, de I, you know, I sing praise. Uh, and all Israel does that. And so he is enthroned because of that. What does that mean? Is he not already on the throne? Is he not already the ruler? Does he not already, and does he not his kingdom extends and does not his rule extends over all? So what does that mean? Any thoughts? Okay. So we know that he's already enthroned, but as we praise, okay, his presence, okay. okay we're going to talk about the presence of God, right? About how there can be varying degrees of presence, of his presence. One thing is we become aware, okay. So as we praise, um, as we acknowledge uh, who he is, we become aware of the presence of God. And um, we become aware of his rule and reign. We become even aware of his power. We become aware of the release of his, his kingdom, the release of his rule and reign, release of his authority. We become aware. Right? We become aware, which means not just seeing, hearing, we also experience it. So that is what it is. It's not like we are putting him on the throne, right? He is already enthroned. But in your own life, in our own lives, that may not be so. He is enthroned. He is the king. But in our hearts and minds, we know that there could be something else. There could be something else taking the place. And, and that's what you know the Bible talks about as an idol. It's not a physical thing, but it's whatever is a substitute for God. So when we say, God, you are enthroned on the praises of your people, it means that the one who is who's ruling over all, one who is sovereign, his rule and reign actually becomes effective, right? It becomes operational in your life and in my life. In situations. Okay, uh, you know, again, I just want to say uh, this is Michael Massey. Please be careful of your mics, of your video. Um, just make sure it's muted. Okay. Okay. So Daniel says, yeah, he's enthroned in the lives and it gets personal. Yeah, it becomes a personal experience of the king, king's rule and reign. So that's the that's a powerful thing, right? So when we praise, when we praise him, when we lift up a praise, and again, I'm talking about not just lifting up the words or singing the words, but when we engage intentionally, he his rule and his reign becomes operational in our lives. It's like we are 
posturing, we are giving him permission, we are opening up um, you know, our lives, our hearts for his rule and reign. Okay. So he, in that way, when we, when we look at this, he's enthroned in the praises of his people. Right? And he is the one who's the ruler, he's the one who's the all-powerful one, he's the sovereign one. So in our life, in our circumstances, in our situations, in our challenges, you know, so let's let's do that. Let's, let's try that out and say, Oh God, I come and I agree with the truth of who you are. Paul and Silas did that, right? In the prison, they actually sang hymns to God agreeing with who God was, agreeing with what he can do. right? And we saw the breakthrough that came into their lives. Okay? So we can do that. You know, We come into a place of agreement. So the psalm says, I will bless, psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So especially during those low times, during those times when we face challenges, when we lift up, Praise to God. You know, it's not just a feel-good, positive thinking, motivational self-talk. You know, there's a lot of that. You know, if you look at social media, affirmations. You say, okay, you are beautiful. You look at the mirror and say 10 times, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. Nothing wrong, right? But the fact we say that is because God says you are precious. He says you are a work of art. You are his workmanship. Ephesians 2, verse 9, verse 9 and 10, right? You are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So, so it's not, that's the background. That's the whole picture. It's not because, you know, I, if I say I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I feel good, you know, I'm victorious, I'm victorious, I'm a champion, you know, automatically the universe <laughs> makes me a champion. You know, that's the terminology that is used, right? But the fact is, it's, it is scriptural, but it's it's a counterfeit when it comes to you know this positive self-talk and you know um, this motivational thing and everything. But when you look at the word, when you look at scripture, when you come in agreement with scripture, and that is actually praise. You know, we are coming in agreement with the word of God, and we're lifting up, and and, and we are declaring this is who God is, and that is praise. And that when we do. The power of God is experienced in our situations. The truth of God, who God is, is experienced in our situations. When we go through some tough times, when we go through some difficult times, when we go through you know, times of lack, right, financially, uh, and when we declare, God, you know, when we sing out, Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. You know, it's difficult to sing in those moments, but we are saying, I'm just gathering myself, I'm stirring myself up, and I'm declaring, God, this is who you are because this is truth. Right? The Lord Jesus says, Thy word is truth when he's addressing the Father. Right? So when we're saying, Hey, I want to worship in spirit and in truth, this is how we do it. It's tough, it's difficult, but we take the truth and we say, God, I'm proclaiming it, I'm declaring it, right? Okay. So, question, if God is enthroned in our praise, then who is enthroned in our complaining, murmuring? <laughs> Obviously, something else, right? It's, it's the credit, something, someone else gets the, you know, the praise, it's not God. Right? When we complain, when we murmur, when we say negative things, hey, I'm useless, I'm worthless, and oh, this situation is so, you know, so bad and so worthless. You know, we're not denying reality. We are rising above, and when we declare truth, God gets the praise. Then who rules and who reigns if we complain? Again, another question. If we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his gates with thanksgiving, whose gates are we enter entering in when we complain and when we murmur? Right? Obviously, it's not God, then it's something else, some other entity, right? Okay, so we'll stop here, and then we'll continue next class. Okay, thank you. God bless.